Most photographers these days who take their work seriously want to make some money from it and also to create an audience for their work. This is a great idea but a big challenge in this changing world. How we make our money and the value of our skills are being heavily challenged by the world of internet, AI and various pieces of software that apparently make everything easier for us. Some of the skills took years to develop and master and now we're being told that a machine can do it for us. In the old days, a photographer would develop their skills over a period of maybe four or five years in a studio under the guidance of professional photographers. Then the day would come where they would decide that they know enough about darkroom and people and subject in order to take on the world by themselves and, and create their own studio. Those days have gone. There was a time when you could walk along through the city streets uh, and stop at a photography shop and look in the window, gawping at your favorite dream camera. Uh, you hardly see a shop like that about anymore. The skills required to be a good photographer still are totally relevant. And it's up to you and I to actually practice those skills and not look for the easy way out by simply pushing a button and accepting what an algorithm or a piece of software says is in fact a great shot when in fact it's probably very similar to most other people's shots in tone, color and balance uh, who use that same software. We're looking for individual expression and that's the artistic way, that's creativity for you, to look for something unique. I wouldn't go looking for original things because that is that old story of trying to reinvent the world, but unique is something we want as an individual. So now on top of all of this, we have an increasing presence of artificial intelligence to deal with. So what do we do? We find new ways to present our work and to continue on best we can as real human beings who love to work with the techniques of human mind and hand in skillful uni unison. It's for this reason that I started this YouTube channel in order to present my ideas and my work as a photographer. At the end of the day, a photographer wants to uh, have an audience to appreciate their work. It could be a paying audience, or it could be through simple recognition of good work. That might lead to exposure and increased awareness of your work, and there's nothing wrong with that. All artists of one kind or another, photographers, writers, painters, dancers, etc., have all had a problem to be able to be heard and seen within a crowded room of shouting people. And often our work is a gentle whisper in the form of a beautiful landscape or a portrait or a still life or even a brilliant street photograph. Even a good street photographer can't help but work and capture the soft poetry of everyday life as he or she wanders through the city streets. So we go with the times and become YouTube creators as well as photographers already busy creating beautiful photos for our portfolios. It's all hard work and sometimes it can be overwhelming to figure out which work has priority, the photography or the YouTubing or the marketing or sitting and collating photos in order to create a good portfolio. There's many pieces of work that we all need to accomplish. Most photographers start out with pure intentions of only wanting to share their work for business and personal reasons. But as soon as we get involved in the world of content creation, whether it be YouTube or Facebook or a website, we're faced with the problem of content marketing. And that sets us a massive task that seems endless in its desire for more and more quality content. Quality is an ambiguous word here because great photos presented as traditional slideshow don't grab attention as much as a video that presents a problem that photographers are drawn in by. When a video title tells you that there are five things you are doing wrong in photography, the algorithm will give it a better leg up than it would a slideshow. But as photographers, we all know that looking through a slideshow of some amazing photos taken by a photographer, we deem more advanced than ourselves will give us more to think about, more motivation to go out and try, and teach us more than if we get caught up in a opening a clicky title that makes us feel we just want to check that we're not doing something wrong in photography. Those five things, what are they? They're always a mystery if we don't click and find out. 
Video titles that put the willies up us touch an ever-present problem, and that's the nagging feeling of doubt that there must be something that we could do to improve our photography, our artistic expression, or our general way of doing things when we just want to let go and be a creator who is free to do as we see fit. Artistic work always involves doubt. We're always looking for the new, the next moment, always attempting to find a connection between what we know and the next connection in the creative thread of ideas. This action of hopping from thought to thought, developing ideas with shifting feet, wide to narrow views and soft to sharp feelings, about to capture an everyday moment and make it special, involves living in a space that is uniquely our own mind moulded by our own self-confidence and decision making. All for good or bad, Doubt will always try and make its way in. It's hard, that's a fact, and photography is not an easy practice of snap shooting or firing off 10 shots of each motive just to go back with a hope and a wish that there'll be a lucky shot in each batch of rapid fire shots. Again, automation allows us to be lazy and let the camera do what it says it can do. Take great photos. But if we allow the camera to take over the work, It'll give us, at best, lots of well-balanced light and darkness, colour schemes that become samey, and each time we point and shoot we'll be a slave to whatever the algorithm in the camera decides is an optimal setting for light conditions. Maybe we want more than this. Maybe that's what creative photography is all about. More. Overriding the everydayness of what is acceptable and instead defining a unique view of our own world to share with an audience who also loves photography and the new, unique way of looking at things. It's here again that self-confidence comes into play. We need to make an income from our activities, and as mentioned earlier, the world is changing. It's in a spin, so we have to say, stay on our toes and become good dancers who can also make a living from our efforts. And if I make YouTube videos, I hope that'll resonate with other photographers and creative people. And I'm working hard on building up to that point where YouTube allows me to become monetized. My hopes are positive. My thoughts on what to expect are as open as a farmyard gate. And there's a bull in the field. Photography requires self-discipline to practice. Pushing yourself to get out and take photos, maintain a positive attitude during crappy rainstorms or winter months when the soul really yearns for sunshine and warmth and summer months when we wish one day that a cloud would cross that blue horizon and create a little bit of drama. We are a fickle lot, nothing satisfies and we are always on the search. That's what makes life itself interesting and for photographers that's what drives us on to the next good shot. We search, find and shoot, then we want to share it with the world, either for some money or we end up sharing it for free. Creative people are often introverted, shy or simply quiet people, and there's much too much going on inside that head to become too engaged in trivial conversations about mundane things. One reason why I find techie talk about cameras and equipment generally to be a massive snooze fest. Just spend some time reading about aspects and technicalities of sensors and cameras, lenses, what makes a good lens and what fits your own needs, I can't tell you which lens to buy, but I can tell you, a beginner photographer what type of lens will help them achieve their desired results. And that's just the point of my YouTube channel. I want to help. So I started a YouTube channel to do that. I don't want to betray my true English reserve and try and be a zany comedian who talks in fast moving snatches of mon monologue just to get attention and come across as a fake personality. I do want to help entertain a little. Uh, the English can't help but add a little dry humour into each conversation, even if it comes across as a little dark sometimes. It's how we get through life. I think every YouTuber has to dodge and dive and edge and experiment their way through video making to find their true voice, their working style that appeals to listeners. And it is what's said that is more important than the talking head you see before you. I mentioned at the beginning that these days making money from our photography is a difficult thing. With that, I mean that because we live in a changing world where there is always the next new thing popping up over the horizon, it causes swarms of people to adjust how they use social media and the internet in general. I remember as if it wasn't that long ago, people bleating the soundbite that 
Nobody will buy anything on the internet. It won't work. But now they do. You could once walk through the streets and stop and gawp through the window of a camera shop admiring your dream camera on full display. Now we look it up on the internet and drool at lenses and cameras, accessories that might make everything easier. There are 52 ways to get your work in front of customers and audiences. YouTube is one of them. I'm not here to sell anything, just to connect and talk about my experience. And if you like my words and my photography, then hopefully you'll return to watch more and maybe one day to own a photo of mine. That would be great. You don't have to. This channel is a bit like my baby at the moment, and I'm trying to find out what it likes and make headway across the algorithmic waves of YouTube's quirks and fancies. At the same time, stay true to myself and my goals. I have plenty of ideas to put into action, and the answer is always and only found after the act of implementing the idea. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you please, please subscribe to support the channel and its venture into the deep green waters of YouTube. All the best and enjoy the weekend. I'm Sean Durham in Berlin. Thank you for watching.